Welcome guys, it's another episode of the SAK Show brought to you by Matt Coffee on Zindagi TV. As always, before we start, just a big thank you to our sponsors, of course, the Royal Orchid Azure, Wet Lounge and the Bollywood Casino. Not forgetting, Matt Coffee, power you now. And today's guest, if you love cricket, keep watching. Welcome guys, it's the SAK Show brought to you by Mac Coffee Power here now and today's guest, if you love cricket, you already know him by now but we are going to get into the finer details of the one and only Karan Call. Karan, welcome on board. Thank you so much, glad to be here. Nice to have you over here and cricket is what this episode is all about, about sports building and you know how it all came about and everything but before that, Karan Call. that's the question I ask everyone, who is Karan Call? Uh, so basically, uh, I think I'll call myself a hustler, uh, <laughs> you know, just, just trying That's to do it. everything that uh, I'm passionate about. Yeah. You know, I don't want to look back and, you know, say that I didn't do this, or I didn't do that. I try and do everything that is under my limit. Okay. So, yeah, I think I, I'll call myself a you hustler. You call yourself a hustler. Yeah. So, tell us, as a child, how are you, bro? Uh, just, you know, as, as a normal child, how, mm -hmm. you know, how you're excited. Yeah. Uh, basically, a very sporty kid. Uh -huh. you know, I've always loved sports. Uh, and, and thanks to my parents, you know, they, they put me uh, in, the, in a camp. Okay. Whereby, you know, you have these holiday camps, cricket, football, and I was put in a cricket camp. Oh. Whereby, uh, and where was this, by the way? I mean, tell, you're born and raised in Kenya? No, I was born in India. India. Uh, yes, I came here when I was two years old. Okay. And uh, studied here, lived all my life here. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so, you know, my So your holiday went. camps and all were locally or? Yeah, so it was in Nairobi, Gymkhana. Okay. Uh, so that's where I was enrolled uh, for this cricket camp, and that's where. That's where the cricket journey started. That's where it started. And okay. then uh, slowly, slowly got into. So it's your dad who made you get into cricket, or yeah. was it you who who was like you chose cricket from football or something? No, I think uh, he put me in that, yeah. and then you gain an interest in, in something. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that I always wanted to do. Okay. But he put me into it because you know just sitting yeah, yeah, doing yeah, nothing. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. That's what parents don't like. like yeah. you know, you're just sitting down <laughs> and doing nothing. True, true, uh, true. They want you to go out there, be active. Yeah. And, uh, that's what he made sure that I did, and okay. slowly, slowly gained. Uh, so, so what, your coaches found you good, or how did the how did the cricket all uh, come inside you? Yeah. So how did that junoon, that josh, come in you about cricket? Uh, so, you know, you're training every day, you're playing matches. People see you, people yeah. watch you. There's selectors that come. So, mm -hmm. this age group cricket that happens. Uh, so that's like a development structure, basically. So, okay. you know, you have. Uh, Selectors coming in, selecting you. So I went through all age groups, which was Kenya under 15, under 17, under 19, and then the national team. Which I mean, my main, uh, the, the first taste of competitive cricket was when I uh, joined the under 19 team for the African qualifiers okay. for the World Cup. Okay. And that was my first taste of competitive cricket. And then as soon as we came back, I was selected for the national team. So getting into the Kenyan cricket team, you know, how does that happen? I mean, what? what tell us your story. Yeah, so basically, like I said, I was put into a camp and uh, you start playing matches, you train, coaches notice you because, I mean, the, the coaches that are there are part of the panel. I mean, I mean, the selectors or the scouting people that come, they normally go to the coaches first. And okay, so there is a scouting program in Kenya that actually goes to yes, scout people. there is a people. development program, there is yeah. a scouting program that goes on. Okay. And, you know, there, there are a lot of coaches that roam around yeah. just looking for talent. Okay, and so at uh, that time you're, you're playing at the, at the under 18 level? No, I was huh. 14 years old. 14 years and old, wow. they were looking wow. for someone to basically play. There was an under 15 tournament coming up okay. and they were scouting for that. So that's how... So you formed your own team or you, you no, joined? No, for the Kenya team. This is for Kenya the Kenya team. Okay, so okay. Basically, the, there are a lot of clubs that were doing this program long time ago. So there's Ayu yeah. there's Baraka, there's Jim Kana. Jim Kana so I was yeah. selected from Jim Kana to okay. represent Kenya under 15 in Uganda. Okay. So that's where it started. And then, so you, you get noticed then because you're already representing Kenya. Yeah, yeah. And then from there you go to under 17 and then you go to under 19 whereby you know. So is it like a fl flowing process or it depends on your performance as well? It actually depends completely on your performance. I mean sports is a performance yeah. uh, thing. You so have there's no biased uh, thing in this? That, no, you or you know, you're so and so and so and so son or something? I mean obviously sometimes you'd have that. Yeah. But when it gets to it gets to a certain level whereby that is not it's not acceptable because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there are people watching you. Yeah. There are people watching what you guys are doing. Yes. So yes. That after a certain level, there's, there's yeah. no way that that will be acceptable. So basically, what, what happened was after under 19, I was directly selected 
in the national team whereby we, the first game we played was against UAE. Yeah. So that's the qualifiers for the World Cup that, yeah. that I played. Yeah. Uh, I had to stop that and yeah. I had to take a break because I had to go back to uni and, and study. Yeah, you know, my yeah. parents were like, you know, at least you have to get us that yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to finish. Yeah, uni. yeah, of course, of course. So that took a back seat for three years and then making a comeback wasn't the easiest thing. So I had to go through all those processes again, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to be out there again. So, you know, uh, league performances is what, what. So what again, you start from the bottom. You start again from the bottom, you go again. Yeah. Again, you're trying to basically make sure that people are noticing you, yeah, you know, yeah. and you have to have consistent performances yeah. for you to be noticed. Okay. So that happened and then... And you, you are an all-rounder, batsman, bowler? No, I'm a batsman. You're just a batsman? I'm a batsman in the team. Okay, so, so what, what did you do that you got noticed out there? Did you hit centuries or what? Tell so us, so you I'm can show off, it's okay. So it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very funny because yeah. when I started under 15, I was yeah. actually a bowler. Really? Yeah, so okay. Uh, when I was very young, I was actually a pace bowler. Okay. And then I uh, went to India for some training and uh, that's where some coach told me, you know, you should start batting as well. Okay. So I started concentrating on my batting and then my bowling went down. Okay. So that's how uh, the batting started, you know. So. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, it's like uh, cricket is, is in Kenya. What, what's the current scene at the moment in Kenya? What do you have to say about that? I mean, I mean once upon a time, cricket was huge. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, the time when Raja Bali took uh, Brian Lara's uh, wicket yeah. and we defeated the West Indies and you know the Cholos, the Odumbes and that, that time it was really massive okay some stuff happened it went down and everything yeah. but at the moment what is the situation like? So when people ask I mean they always ask about the 2003 World Cup yes. where we beat Sri Lanka over yeah. and we reached the semi-finals yes. but uh, at the moment uh, we're Cricket Kenya is in a transition period. Okay, and are you part of it? Yes, so we okay. basically we've lost a lot of uh, senior players. Yeah. I mean, most of them have retired, like, you know, Steve Tickle retired, yeah. Thomas yeah. Odoyo. A lot of people retired at the same time, and uh, a lot of youngsters came in. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we have a lot of talented youngsters, but there's a process to mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And again, we're going through that process again, mm -hmm. and we're going, uh, I mean, this team in the next two, three years, will be given a lot of competition, but at the moment we're in a transition period, we're trying to make sure that everything uh, is going well. So what went wrong? It was like all the seniors retired and there, were no, there was no youth basically? Basically, I don't think there was a development structure as such for the youth, yeah. you know, to, to take it to the next level or, you know, mm -hmm. to replace the Ticolo or to replace the Thomas. Yeah, there wasn't yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that structure set yeah. for them to come and do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you've just been told you're playing for the national team now. You know, you've just come in. Yeah, so yeah. you haven't really gone through that, mm, mm. Uh, playing that competitive period. I mean, yeah. there are people who've played over 100 ODIs yeah. and you're just coming in, filling in the issue. Yeah, it's going yeah, to be very difficult. Of course. So from the 2003 World Cup, the only person who's playing at the moment is Colin Sabuya. Wow, he's still playing? Yeah, he's still wow. playing. Uh, he's pretty young. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, he's still playing. He's mm -hmm. the only senior player at yeah. the moment that we have. From, okay, that from that batch, yeah. yeah. So he's the only person that we have at the moment. There are okay. a lot of youngsters that are coming up, you know. Yeah. Uh, so our captain, Rakeh Patel, he's, mm -hmm. he's excellent. Yeah. He's someone who can... He's, he's a good batsman he's as well. He's a really yeah. good batsman. Yeah. He's yeah. a really good batsman. He's yeah. doing well. He's, he's yeah. performed very uh, consistently. Yeah. Uh, we have Irfan Karim. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Asif Karim's uh, son. Yeah. He's a wicked keeper batsman. He's uh -huh, doing well uh -huh, as well. Uh -huh. We have a lot of youngsters that are coming through, so which is a good thing. Yeah. But like I said, again, it you know, needs time. Them, to it needs time, and yeah, you know, yeah. we're going through yeah, yeah. a massive transition. Well, we wish we wish you guys all the best, and we pray you know, that you guys uh, do take us to the World Cup. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean that should be our dream right now. That's what we're doing right now. I mean, yeah. uh, we have a couple of games to uh, build up a game towards the World Cup qualifiers. Yeah. We're playing uh, Netherlands yeah. uh, in Kenya. I hope all of you come support us because the game is at home. Okay, oh definitely, we'll be there. Yeah. yeah, and in December we're playing Scotland in uh -huh. Dubai. Uh -huh. So those are the two main uh, games that we have right now, two main fixtures that we have at the moment yeah. to take us to the World Cup. So if we do well in that, yeah. we've made it to the World Cup. Brilliant stuff. Now tell me, uh, do you, in terms of training and all, do you guys train people and everything? Do, oh, you, yeah. do you train as a per person or? Oh yes, uh, so basically uh, we just opened up, uh, Veer and I just opened up a company. Who's Veer? Veer is my partner. Okay. He's, uh, he's my partner. He's also a cricketer. He's a cricketer, he's played under 19 level. Okay. Went to UK to study sports science. Came okay. back and we've started, so basically we, fo we formed a company called Starfield Sports Limited. Okay. And uh, basically mm. 
it's something very exciting for us because we're related to sports. So it's something very excited, exciting for us, something that we're, we're looking forward to doing. So basically we provide services such yeah. as, uh, we're a management sports company that provides services such as sports consultancy, sports events. We did a, an event recently called the Numi Cricket Challenge, yes, which yes. I would thank the Zindagi TV for covering. Yeah, yeah, launch, yeah, we, lo we, we so loved much. it, yeah. Uh, over 400 uh, kids had participated yeah. and we had over 100 uh, underprivileged kids that were part of that, uh, you know, just making sure that they get that cricket, that they need that exposure, you know, you didn't, it, we had cricketers uh, who were playing without shoes wow. and that's development, you know, they, they were just excited to be yeah, playing. It's also the passion is there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was just exciting to see yeah. people, there's a kid that even cried and, you know, he's like, I'm playing in the ground that, uh, you yeah. know, they played a World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's great to see these things and then you know we have training we have a couple of uh, academies a cricket cricket academies that we've opened yeah. in around Nairobi there's one at Braven there's one at Nairobi Gymkhana uh, so yeah it's all about development we're working with a lot of organi organizations to make sure that you know the sports structure yeah. is at another level and you know ensuring that uh, the sports uh, in, in Kenya is basically as bright as it should be yeah that's the direction man and, and uh, you know it's like people say in Kenya you cannot survive on cricket only how true is that? Uh, it is true. I mean, uh, the funds that we used to receive from ICC before is not the same funds that we receive now because yeah. they're the ones funding Cricket Kenya and mm -hmm. uh, it's not the same amount that they used to. So even for them to survive, yeah. uh, you know, you, there's a lot of stuff that they do, you know, there's salaries, there's yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. So obviously, uh, it's a tough I, ask. It's, yeah. yeah, I mean that's why a lot of uh, cricketers, uh, club cricketers, whereby they get paid from clubs yeah, as well. Yeah. There are a lot of us that w that are working and playing uh, cricket. So uh, you you do have full time cricketers, but it's it's not uh, something that you would survive. You would survive, on, yeah. right? Good. And uh, now tell me your inspiration. Who's your your inspiration in cricket? Now tell me first. You can tell me Kenyan inspiration. Uh, Steve Ticolo. Steve Ticolo. He's, he's someone I've worked with very closely. I respect yeah. him a lot. Yeah. Every time that I think I've had a problem, he's been there to support. I've loved watching him play. Yeah. I've loved watching him play from a very young age. Okay. And he's someone, you know, who... He was great. He's great. He still a, is. A legend. <laughs> yeah, legend, legend. And I've been very fortunate enough to work with yeah. him very yeah. closely, so... Good. And on an international level? Uh, I think Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli. Yeah, he, uh -huh. he's someone who walks the talk. Yeah. I mean... Um, very aggressive. Uh -huh. I love what he does. You know, it's very hard for you to talk and cool. then go out there and do something. Yeah, yeah. Has a lot of critics, but he still goes out he there goes, uh, and answers to everyone. Brilliant stuff. You also do modeling, by the way. Yeah, I mean, cricket has always been my first love. Modeling yeah. came as a by the way thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you when you're young, you yeah. watch people on TV, yeah. you're seeing billboards, and you want to be there. Yeah. And I got. I saw a couple of billboards of yours. Yeah, yeah. recently. Yeah. Uh, so you want to be there, and yeah. uh, I got an opportunity, and I took it. Saying that. Uh, I, d I did a lot of modeling with yeah. Shiv as well, yeah. and uh, it wasn't the easiest. I mean, we struggled <laughs> quite a bit to even yeah, yeah. get to that. I mean, to get one job, mm -hmm. we got rejected a lot of times, plenty mm. of times, to even get one job. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, that's life. I mean, that's how true, true, uh, true. you learn. And so, where do we great. see you in five years as a cricketer? Five years in cricket? Uh, that's that's a long uh, thing to say. You Ooh. should ask me what is next year because we have, <laughs> we have, I mean, I would definitely want to be in the World Cup, which is in 2019, yeah. that's in England and Wales. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're working towards and I would love to see Kenya. Kenya there, yes, and, we, uh, we all would love that. I yeah, mean. Uh, I mean, that's that's. Well, we that's wish you I'm all the best for that. As for now, you guys sip your uh, Mac coffee, we'll be right back. Kenyan cricket at its best. Karen Cole is here with us, of course. And uh, Karen, you good? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Yes. Now, tell me, um, what is the strangest thing you've ever done with your bat? Um, I know your bat is here, man. Check this out, man. And it's written here, dynamic and champion. Truly, indeed. Tell us, what, what is the strangest thing you've done with this bat? I don't think it was strange. I think it was more aggressive. Uh, yeah. I actually hit someone with the bat once. Really? When I was very young. I mean, uh, you, know, <coughs> you have all this sledging. Yeah. Someone just sledging you, like yeah. he keeps talking. Uh, was he a bowler? No, he was a keeper. 
<laughs> you're just like right here behind yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And he kept talking, he kept talking yeah. the whole time. Mm. And you know, you just lose concentration. And at that point of time, I just turned back and whacked Swap. him with the bat. Right. But that was a mistake. I mean, it's not. I hope he was wearing I, his wicket keeper's helmet, you know? <laughs> I, wouldn't, uh, I, I don't think anyone should ever do that. You know, yeah. It's a disrespect to the game. Yeah. Always respect your Always, bats. okay. Yeah, Always respect, respect your bats. Bats. There you go, guys. And have you ever, like, uh, picked your nose during fielding or something and then later on you've gone and shook uh, your hands and everything? Uh, that happens, yeah? You know, you're, you're on the field for almost three hours. So you do a lot worse things so, than picking yeah, your nose. Yeah, there's a lot of other things <laughs> that we do, which uh, I cannot say on TV. You mentioned it, mentioned it. We got the point. Uh, three of your favorite cricketers in Kenya? Uh, Steve Ticolo, yeah. uh, Martin Suji, yeah. um, Colin Zubuya. Colin Zubuya, yeah. okay. Uh, three of your favorite cricket players internationally? Uh, A.B. De Villiers, yeah. Virat Kohli mm -hmm. and uh, McCallum. McCallum, okay. So batting or bowling? Batting, always. No bowling, because Not that's anymore. where you started. That's you where I started. You're a pace bowler. I was a pace bowler. And then you do, so how's the transition by the way? Uh, Would you ever go back to bowling? No, I love batting now. I uh -huh. love it. I just love everything about it. Okay. You know, just concentration, just being there. So, you know. as you speak about batting, what is your f worst fear as a batsman? My worst fear as a batsman is to get out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't fear the ball coming there if you have somebody like Shoy Bakhtar in front of you. I mean, that's why you train for it. Yeah. That's oh, nice. He's ever ready for it. That's the spirit, guys. Uh, greatest experience as a Kenyan cricketer? Great experience. I mean, my first uh, game after I got back, you know, went to England yeah. and uh, we're playing the T20 for qualifiers and yeah. it's amazing to see the amount of support that you get when you go out of Kenya. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's amazing to see the amount of people that come to watch you from Kenya, you know, mm. uh, the amount of support that you receive. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, so recently the, the greatest, greatest experience was uh, in Nepal yeah. where we had over 20,000 uh, Wow. Fans, I mean, who had come to watch uh, the game against Kenya and Nepal. I was batting in the middle and all I saw was just heads of people, like wow. I couldn't even hear myself, the amount of noise that was there. Yeah. So that's the best one. What about the worst experience as a Kenyan cricketer? Uh, worst experience has been, it's, on, it's been on the field as well, just, yeah. uh, you know, dropping a cat. <laughs> uh, that, that's the worst uh, yeah. thing. Dropping a cat is like, yeah, it's, uh, the whole I mean, team is on your case. Then. Not even the whole team, the, a huh. lot of supporters are just yeah. uh, behind you at huh. that time. And, uh, I mean, they're, all they're trying to do is yeah. just demotivate you oh. to drop the catch, so okay. yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. Have you ever ha had an issue with, with a fan once or something like, you let us down? Uh, no, not, 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 yet. not yet. Yeah, we pray you don't get that, you know. Yeah. And last but not least, your favorite Kenyan food? Ugali and sukuma. Ugali, Ugali and, and fish as well. Ugali and fish as well. Uh -huh. Kisumu boy, yeah? <laughs> Brilliant. Anything else you want to tell to our viewers before I show them something really, really exclusive? Uh, I mean, it's, all, it's for all the youngsters out there, I mean, you know, chase your dream. Uh, you live only once. Uh, make sure you're doing everything that you can, everything that you're passionate about, and uh, go out there and uh, express yourself. Brilliant stuff. Karan, thank you so much for being thank on so the show much. here. From Matt Coffee, our sponsor over here, this is a small gift for you. Thank you have you. enough stock of coffee, so you can yes. have this, get your energy, and make us proud in the Kenyan so cricket much. field. Thank you so Thanks much. so much for watching, guys. Now, before you switch off, check this out. Karan Cole exclusive, giving us some tips with his famous bat. Uh, just a couple of tips on uh, a few shots. Uh, the first one and my favorite shot would be the cover drive. But before that, uh, there are a few things. Uh, so basically how you grip the bat. So there's always supposed to be a V, always supposed to be a V here. And that's the most important thing. That's how you should hold the bat and that's how you should grip the bat. And secondly, your stance, you know, legs parallel to each other and making sure that you're at a very comfortable position. Uh, I'll show you the cover drive now. So basically a cover drive is playing towards covers. So basically the ball has been pitched outside off and you play that shot. So basically what this does is your leg is going towards the ball and the most important thing is your head. Your head position is always supposed to be straight. And that's the most important thing. Your head position is always supposed to be straight. Ball comes and boom. There.